Hello, and welcome to Our Kids, brought to you by the Jefferson County Public School. I'm Pleasure Ridge Park High School correspondent, Jalen Level. This February, as we celebrate the leap year, we'll share stories about local students improving the environment, third graders combining their writing skills with a fine dining experience, and preschoolers preparing for their education. We'll also have stories from our five-star high school student correspondents. Music without instruments. I'm Ballard correspondent Laurel Deppin, and I'll have the story. What started as a restaurant review writing assignment has turned into an opportunity for the entire third grade class at Atkinson Academy to enjoy lunch in one of Louisville's fine dining establishments. Courtesy of Limu owner Kevin Grangier, almost all of the students at Atkinson are qualified for free or reduced price school meals, and most have never eaten at a restaurant, let alone a high-end steakhouse. This was an experience relished by all. We are at uh, a restaurant called Le Mou. It's a very traditional sort of southern inspired restaurant in, uh, in the Highlands. All right guys, take a look over your menus and see what we have available today. We are so excited today to have 70 third graders here to show them uh, really what a great dining experience is. It's our whole third grade class from Atkinson. Um, Server Jay is going to be right over here to take your order. Enjoy. The third grade teachers, we started opinion writing with our kids and we decided that we were going to do a restaurant review, but then um, we thought about just our kids and um, the experiences that they've had and we decided that a lot of them probably haven't had an experience where they've actually gone into a restaurant and ordered from a server and so um, we decided that we were going to try to bring the restaurant to our school and so I kind of ran it across my husband um, who works for Cisco Food Services it turned into this. Soon we're going to have some bread and butter out on the table for you that will come with your house salad. The dressing will be on the side. Ask your principal if your whole third grade class can come to like me for lunch. I'm excited. Ready? <laughs> Everybody on the staff today is volunteering their time. We normally serve lunch at this period, so we divide the restaurant in half and save the main part of the dining room for these children today. Um, we have the regular uh, servers and bussers and runners and chef staff and hosts and they've, they're all um, volunteered their time to make sure the children have an experience just like you would normally. Main course, your choice of USDA choice man flat iron steaks served with garlic, mashed potatoes and fresh trimmed green beans. And what did you have to do with your napkin? Put it on one glass for you. If you spill something, it's going to go on the napkin. It is a huge deal. Um, our kids, um, we have 98% free and reduced lunch. Um, so the majority of our kids probably won't have another experience like this anytime in the near future. And a lot of them have not had this experience ever. So it's a huge deal just for them to, you know, we looked at pictures on um, online of the restaurant before we came and they were all like, it's fancy. You know, so um, that was like the first word out of all of their mouths. Have you ever been to a restaurant like this before? No, so how is this different? Because it's really fancy. Yes, ma'am. No, sir. Please and thank you. We've talked a lot about a restaurant review and, um, you know, what makes up a restaurant review. So we talked about what we were going to look for in the restaurant when we came today. Complex flavor, just how I like it. I am always nervous about reviews, uh, no matter who's writing them. You know, our goal always is to create a great experience and an exceptional, exceptional time for, you know, the folks who dine with us. And it's no different for these kids. You know, I'm, I'm very concerned they're going to get exactly what they want, the way they want to prepare it in a timely manner. How is the green bean? Good. Because I love steak. And steak is my favorite thing. And what's your favorite thing on the plate? Green beans and mashed potatoes and the steak. Uh, I had steak, but I ate it all. Yeah, and what do you think of it? Uh, it was good, and the last bit it was a little burnt, but I liked it because it tastes like bacon. I mean, this is as authentic of an experience as you can get, and so it being that kind of experience for them, I think their restaurant reviews are going to be above and beyond. Um, what they would have been if we wouldn't have had this experience. I think them just having the experience, it's going to be a lot of talk and um, just excitement from them. The um, 
the atmosphere is um, good. They have a lot of paintings. And the waitresses are nice. You know, I remember the first time that I went to a really nice restaurant. And I have really great uh, memories of that. And I just felt like it was a good opportunity for us to um, give the children a really great experience and something to remember and maybe also something to aspire to as they, as they get older. Well, I thought it was awesome that, you know, a lot of their servers are volunteering their time today. They're not getting paid for this. And then just for him to welcome us into his restaurant. And then also there are a few people from Cisco Food Services that were um, helping prepare the food. And so I think it's awesome that, you know, that they would all volunteer their time to make all of these kids as happy as they're going to be, you know, and, and have this experience. How is it? Thumbs up. The Fern Creek Junior ROTC teams are national leaders when it comes to winning competitions. Correspondent Katherine Scott shows us what makes them so special. No other sports team in the country can say what Fern Creek High School's drill team can say. The girls' drill team, also known as the Lady Leathernecks, won 15 consecutive national championships between 2000 and 2014, while the male drill team, or Leathernecks, annually finish as arguably one of the top finest male armed Marine Corps drill teams in the nation. Not only is drill a fun sport to compete in, it teaches students leadership skills, organization skills, respect, and many other important skills that are crucial to achieving the high standards of the Marines. Senior and captain of the girls' drill team, Lexi Stoneburner, explains her favorite part about the drill team and the lessons drill has taught her that she will remember for the rest of her life. My favorite part about drill team would have to be um, definitely the bond everybody makes because we're together so much. Um, and I'm not saying it's nice all the time. Like, it, it's nice because it's not nice, if that makes sense. We get to just learn how to deal with people in situations that are hard and in stressful situations and when you're tired and when um, you've had a really bad day and you still have to accomplish a mission, you still have to accomplish, you know, a task, whatever it is. Um, so it's really nice to be able to, like, get to experience that now before we go out into the wor real world and go to college and get really stressed out there. So. Um, my favorite part would have to be just that bond that we get from the hard times. Senior and Sergeant Major of ROTC, Gage Hill, explains the reasons he joined the drill team in the first place. My future endeavor is to join the Marine Corps. It was one of those deals where, you know, it was just more I could learn. I could learn about rifle handling, the fundamentals, and it was, it was just being closer to the unit. The unity and you, you have your ROTC brothers, but when you're coming in every day at 6 o'clock in the morning, you are going through the grind every single day for the entire school year. You just you become you know a part of a family, and it, it really is you dependability, and you have to be there for it. You can't be late to practice because that affects them. There's an empty spot that they have to fill. Senior and captain of the boys' drill team, Bryce Moore, explains his favorite part about being a member of Fern Creek's drill team. My favorite part about drill, it would probably have to be just. Um, the family aspect because it's like being an ROTC it's you already have that kind of family bond but then with drill it's like even more because of all the you're spending more time with these people than you do with your actual family. Between the early mornings and late afternoons of intense training and practice Fern Creek High School's drill team is on their way to taking nationals once again. For our kids, I'm Fern Creek correspondent Katherine Scott. Correspondent Laurel Deppin gives us an inside look at high school a cappella group competitions. A new trend is sweeping through JCPS high schools. Several different schools across the district have formed a cappella groups and got together to showcase their skills. Contemporary acapella music is um, a new genre of music that has recently started that's no instruments, but it's using your voice to make instrumental sounds. Uh, sometimes it can include a beatboxer or a vocal percussionist, and then there are soloists and background singers. And we started Bulldog Beats 
three years ago at Mayo High School and wanted to do something different and fun and teach kids and reinforce what we were doing in class. Students express their views on the art form and the camaraderie that goes with it. I love it. I mean, just the sound and the creativity that comes with acapella and the fact that there are no instruments used and it's just vocal, it's just really amazing. We started our acapella group last year. Um, it was kind of a product of other groups in the area starting an acapella group and so we decided it would be a great idea to start one to express ourselves and to kind of get more into the community and um, to get an opportunity to sing and just share the love of music to everyone. Acapella groups have the chance to perform not only at competitions, but at school events for the enjoyment of themselves and their peers. I like that it's a different type of music that most people aren't familiar with, so when they do hear it, they are surprised. Like, this is really cool. Acapella groups are popping up all around JCPS. Keep your ears open for a group in your area. I'm Ballard correspondent Laurel Deppin for Our Kids. We have a lot more stories about our kids coming up. Stay with us. I'm neurosurgeon Shad Bidiwala, Seneca High School class of 1989. I am JCPS. I'm Ballard High School junior Brianna Owens, and I've been selected for the Wharton School of Business Summer Institute. I am JCPS. I'm Marshall Goldsmith, Valley High School class of 1967. Executive leadership coach, I am JCPS. I'm Justin Cornwell, Eastern High School class of 2007, and I played a young Muhammad Ali. I am JCPS. We are JCPS. The portal is your online link for information about your child's grades, test scores, attendance, career choices, and much, much more. It's a fast and easy way to stay on top of what your child is doing in school. If your child's teacher has set up a virtual classroom, you can log on to JCPS online and access grades for class assignments or communicate directly with teachers. The Parent Portal offers a convenient way you can stay involved in your child's education. Welcome back. You're watching Our Kids, sponsored by Jefferson County Public Schools. I'm PRP correspondent Jalen Level. Twelve JCPS schools participated in the Urban Heat Allen Effect Youth Summit, sponsored by Brightside in the Partnership for a Green City. Students were able to have interactive discussions about the city's future with top local leaders and environmental scientists. Well, we were thinking that we were going to put trees on the southern, southwest parking lot of our school because there's no trees really at our school. Oh, that's no fun. No. Okay. So, there's like three. Yeah, we there's three. There's three. So, and it sounds like you probably have definitely a lot of like lawn space. Yeah. Yes. We're at Jefferson Community and Technical College in the Health Science Hall Auditorium, and we're having the Urban Heat Island Youth Summit. Uh, we are trying to come up with recommendations for JCPS to help mitigate the urban heat island problem in um, JCPS is the 27th largest school district in the US. We are on a field trip to learn about the urban heat method and like environmental actions and how we can uh, do more things to help keep like runoffs and weather uh, and good environmental interaction in our city in a rain barrel and then water from that <coughs> and that way as what was Russ was saying is maybe we do put some of those barriers like on the roof so if we can change the heat island effect we can also change the energy that we use in the schools and at home in 2012 Dr. Brian Stone from the Georgia Institute of Technology uh, concluded that Louisville is one of the most rapidly warming cities in the country. The impact all these little cells along the solar panel and that then converts that energy to electrical power which comes out now through the back of, of the system. So it has a little controller here and now these go into a battery system. The summit came about as a genesis of a research project of Dr. David Howarth at the University of Louisville who's wanting to gather baseline data from meteorological stations on the urban heat island effect and who better to work with 
than the future leaders of tomorrow. We can make it like a better world that we can like use reusable fuel, less pollution, everything, anything that can help the environment stay alive. Some of it I knew about, but the urban heat I just now learned about today, and I'm glad I learned about it, so. The urban heat island is, uh, if you look at Louisville on a map, Louisville's always 10 to 15 degrees warmer than the surrounding more rural counties, and it comes in large part due to impervious surfaces like roofs, roads, parking lots. If you've got large areas that are paved, or that are like a black roof, which is what you see in Louisville, they, they absorb a lot of the heat and then emit it back into the atmosphere over the evening. So the low temperature for the day does not get as cool as it could. The upper temperature of the day is typically not the problem. It's not cooling down at night. Well, it makes me feel that I can make a big change in our city and by like planting like the tools they showed us earlier and uh, things that help our environment stay healthy and alive. I think I can like plant trees and I can like uh, inform people to plant trees to help our environment like t uh, because trees give oxygen, natureness, and they uh, take in carbon dioxide. It's been extremely exciting. It's fun to watch the students and how engaged they are. And then there's like a little courtyard with all the dead trees and there's no and there's, like, grass there. there's, there's like on the yeah. manual side there's like just this like oh, just yeah. patch of know. land that like we can put yeah. trees in there. Plus yeah we could do and like oh, yeah. on the Green corners they're, they're all like worn down. So Congratulations to Anna Lauren of DuPont Manual High School as the winner of Creative Interpretation Film Category at the annual 15th District PTA Reflection Contest. Students Georgia Taylor and John McWilliams performed an impressive dance number in various locations around Louisville. Correspondent Morgan Owens checks out the clothing trends at Atherton and Fern Creek High Schools to find out if comfort or fashion is the top priority. When you walk down the halls of any school, you will see different styles from head to toe. Some people prefer to dress according to the weather and make sure they are comfortable for the school day. Others choose to dress to impress and show off their best outfits. Why do some students prefer being on the cutting edge of fashion? Why do some like dressing casual and for comfort? Atherton Senior Madison thinks there are more benefits to dressing nice. Um, I like to look nice just because it makes me feel better. Um, it makes me feel more confident and I feel like I can get through my day without worrying about who's looking at me or uh, what my face looks like or what my hair looks like. I think, I think it gives me more confidence as a person. According to Fern Creek Senior Noah, his wardrobe gives him a confidence boost. I like to wear something that's stylish but also comfortable. So, for example, I'd wear a pair of jeans and a hoodie, and I'd wear like a cool t-shirt underneath it, but it'd still be comfortable, yet still stylish. So I like to be able to, to look cool and feel cool all together. Dressing better increases my confidence by a lot, because just like something like a cool outfit or something could take my mood from being bad, and then I'm like, wait a minute, I got a fire outfit on, I'm in a good mood. Zara, a student at Atherton, describes how fashion is seen at her school. The thing about Atherton is that there's such a strong diversity and people, you can tell a lot by what they wear, like um, some people like showing like the clubs that they're in or um, some people aren't afraid to show some religious symbols which I think is like really amazing because it shows how open-minded and accepting Atherton is. Some students like Aubrey aren't ready to commit to one side or the other. My outfit almost, I mean it kind of like explains what kind of mood I'm in to be honest. So like when I wake up and I'm just not really feeling it that day, I'll just wear sweatpants and a hoodie just because I just don't feel like trying. But some days I'll wake up in a different mood and I'll try and dress cute just for myself. So when it comes to student wardrobe, you can find all styles of fashion as diverse as the students themselves. For our kids, I'm Front Creek correspondent Morgan Owens. Fern Creek student Dana Turner explains why she wants to be part of the Communications and Media Magnet program. Good morning and thanks for watching FCTV6. I'm Dana Turner. So I decided to transfer to Fern Creek at the end of my sophomore year at Atherton. I was an art major and then here I joined the telemedia program because it really caught my eye. <laughs> um, so here we did stuff, we made packages, and we went and filmed at other schools. Um, 
and I got into the morning show doing FCTV6, which is just a broadcast every morning, and we read news stories and announcements, and then we play some of the packages that we previously filmed. So between school and schoolwork and the morning show and soccer, um, and I have a part-time job, so for the morning show, we'll get here at like 7 a.m., I'll go to school all day, and then I'll either have work or soccer, it's one or the other, and then somewhere between everything I do. Some homework. Yeah, totally rewarding. <laughs> we have more great stories about JCPS students. Stay tuned. Do you need help providing school clothes for your child? The 15th District PTA Clothing Assistance Program can help provide uniforms and other clothing. Make an appointment with the Family Youth Resource Center at your child's school. Donations of new and gently used uniforms and clothing are also accepted. Call 485-7062 or 485-7450 for more information. I'm neurosurgeon Shad Bidiwala, Seneca High School class of 1989. I am JCPS. I'm Ballard High School junior Brianna Owens, and I've been selected for the Wharton School of Business Summer Institute. I am JCPS. I'm Marshall Goldsmith, Valley High School class of 1967. Executive leadership coach, I am JCPS. I'm Justin Cornwell, Eastern High School class of 2007, and I played a young Muhammad Ali. I am JCPS. We are JCPS. Welcome back. You're watching Our Kids, sponsored by the Jefferson County Public Schools. I'm PRP correspondent Jalen Level. Citing the measurable success of last summer's Kindergarten Readiness Camp Program, the CENS Foundation, along with the Jefferson County Public Education Foundation, announced a plan for a major expansion of the program for this upcoming summer. The four-week camp will grow to serve about 1,200 students. That's 12 times as many as were served by the program in 2014. Let's take a look at some of the action in the classroom. And I want you to make me a J. A big J and a little J. They're, they're working on multiple skills. Uh, one, they're working on learning their colors. If you notice as you went around, the teachers would ask them what color is that that you're crayon that you're pulling out. What color is that? Is that orange? Second thing they're working on is social skills. Uh, they're, they're working on name recognition. They're working on recognition of objects uh, and being able to learn to draw. It might be a dog that has like a, a poodle or something with a lot of hair. An eagle? Cheetah. Cheetah. Oh, awesome. Oh. Last summer, with the help of the CENS Foundation, we expanded a kindergarten readiness camp. The gains in kindergarten readiness just after four weeks of camp have been remarkable. Overall, regardless of attendance, the children attending camp scored 70.7% .7 kindergarten ready on the Brigance assessment at the start of the kindergarten year. This is a program that delivers measurable results and holds broader potential for the district. And that's why the CENS Foundation today is proud to announce expanded support for this program with a $500,000 grant to expand summer camps next year. Hey, what is that? Yeah, with a long neck. It's a swan. A swan, good job. That's right, a swan. Because a swan has a long neck. You know, when you go from serving 300 students to the possibility of serving 1,200 students, that just means that we have the opportunity to get 900 students uh, kindergarten ready over and above what we've had in the past. And that just to me is phenomenal because that's a win for the community, it's a win for the district, but most importantly it's a win for the student which gives an opportunity to be successful in life. Students from Ramsey Middle School showed off their health sciences knowledge with a demonstration at a recent board meeting. This demonstration is part of the 7th grade unit on the digestive system. To demonstrate mastery of the content, students perform the activity of acting out the process of digestion. Each student will represent a portion of the digestive system and model the actions taken by our bodies to process food into a usable energy resource for our bodies. Digestion begins in the mouth. Mechanical digestion is carried out as the teeth grind the food into smaller pieces. 
The salivary glands add saliva to moisten the food and break it down with chemical digestion. The food is formed into a bolus and passes into the pharynx. This is the process of swallowing, a part of mechanical digestion. The bolus passes into the esophagus where the wave action of the throat muscles push the food towards the stomach. This is called peristalsis, which is another form of mechanical digestion. The esophagus is lined with mucus, which helps the food move into the stomach. Mechanical digestion continues as the stomach squeezes and turns the chewed food. Digestive juices and hydrochloric acid are added for chemical digestion. The food is broken down considerably during this process. As the food moves out of the stomach and into the small intestine, bile is produced in the liver, passed to the gallbladder, and added to the digesting food to add aid in chemical digestion. The pancreas adds more digestive juices and continues chemical digestion. Next, food passes through the nearly 15 feet of the small intestines. Wave-like motions keep mechanical digestion going and the food moving. More mucus helps ease the passage of the food. While the food moves along, nutrients or juices seep through the walls and are absorbed by the body. As food moves through the large intestine, the final nutrients are absorbed and waste begins to form into a mass to be passed out of the body. The anus compacts the waste, which are then passed out of the body through the rectum in the form of feces. Now you may know even more than you wanted to about the digestive process. Thank you for your time. JCPS's new vision statement reads, All Jefferson County Public School students graduate prepared, empowered, and inspired to reach their full potential and contribute as thoughtful, responsible citizens of our diverse, shared world. It is three focus areas. Uh, we talked about the second one, um, building capacity. The first one is deeper learning. What does it mean for our students to be successful? People need to know that's all students. And the third one is infrastructure and systems. How do we create the infrastructure and systems within the um, Jefferson County Public School System? Because our goal is all students to be prepared. We have to figure out ways to reach all students. In our kids news, We'd like to congratulate the latest Excel award-winning teacher, Caitlin Jennings of No Middle School. We come today to bring you the Excel Award, and this time, sing your praises. Congratulations. And a big congratulations to JCPS students who won at the Kentucky State Deaf and Hard of Hearing Spelling Bee held in Elizabethtown. Thanks for watching our show. We hope you enjoyed it. You can find full episodes of Our Kids on the JCPS YouTube channel. Until next time, keep supporting Our Kids.